Hello, and a very warm welcome to the Insider Essay, your guide to living better. Join us today as we open up to dreaming bigger and celebrate the theme, something old, something new. Experience the magical wonder of gypsy living with a modern twist in the garden route. See how artist Mbongeni Butelezi makes beautiful creations from upcycled materials. Learn about an exciting initiative creating job opportunities and empowering South Africans in need. Visit the former home of Nelson Mandela and see how it has been converted into a boutique hotel. Travel to Wolseley on a getaway with rocker Francois van Koek and his family. And get your sweat on with an energetic and exciting gym class that has adapted its business online. Escaping to the garden route, we discover a secret getaway with imaginative accommodation inspired by the traditional gypsy wagon. These vados provide an enchanting retreat to a bygone era with a new modern twist. Hey, welcome to Treat and Villas and Vados. Situated on the stunning coast of the garden route in the beautiful town of Wilderness, welcome to the magic of Treatum. decided to move to this beautiful part of the world, we were looking for something very specific in the property. It needed to be close to a lake because Mark has boats and he's very much part of the ocean and the lakes. And I said to him that I have to have a forest. Please, 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 can we have a forest? And then when we came to Wilderness, we found this most magnificent property with a indigenous forest with milkwoods and cheesewoods. And we knew we'd fallen in love when we got to the top of the property. Even though we hadn't even stepped foot onto it, we knew that this was it for us. And we're so happy that we did. <laughs> We actually told Mark's mom and her husband Bernard about moving here first and they were like, we're coming! So they sold everything and we decided to move them up here a year before us. And then we thought, okay, cool, so let's get everything in order. I resigned, he resigned. And then we started off by obviously creating pathways because there was nothing here, it was bush. There was no water, no electricity, nothing. And then we started building our home and then we started building the treehouse villa. And those were the first. And then after that, two gypsy wagons with obviously the beautiful love tunnel that we built now in COVID when we were bored. And the sauna and the beautiful love pool. And there's so much more to come. Right, let's show you around. So back in the day when um, the Romani people designed their own vadas, it was all about the story of the family and everything from the artwork to the interiors, the exteriors, everything was about their own family. And that's exactly what we've done here. Every single one of these beautiful Vardos has a story about us and somebody in our lives that meant a lot to us. This one over here is dedicated to my mother. She's the gypsy, she's the traveler. She's from Holland and her late husband, Bernard. And the Vardo on the other side over there is the owl Vardo. That one is dedicated to Debbie's mother. We, my mom and I, share a birthday, 29th of November, and it has a spiritual symbolism because owls, um, when we were both born, were the spirit animal for that particular month. I think when we got here, we realized that we wanted to be off the grid as much as possible. So we've tried with water first, and with everything we've done, We've tried to keep it as natural as we can and not disturb too much forest. I mean, you see the forest is very much a part of us. When we decided to launch into building the Vardos, we had to be true to ourselves and to our entertainment background. And I phoned Africa Burn. I said, I don't want to hire a design agency. I want those proper people who have built with their own hands, who covered in paint, who look a bit weird. <laughs> and I wanted to mix that crazy art with the luxury that we already had here at Treatum. So I spoke to my very good friend, Monique Morgan, and she became my art director, and she managed um, a team of artists. So Debbie and I worked on this. She called me and she said, you have to be part of this project. We've known each other for 18 years. 
and our friendship allows us to know each other so well, finish each other's sentences. She knows I'm really good with colour, she knows my design and eye for things. I think colour combinations bring out an emotion in a person and the vibrant bright colours is what inspired me in this project. The most rewarding part was moulding with the clay, getting to know a new element of medium, like the resin and the clay. The resin being all of these cast moulds, which was really exciting for me. I loved it. I enjoyed the flower elements that I started from scratch. So you had to visualise it, you had to create it from nothing. And then as it grew and became something, that was very rewarding for me. And then seeing the end results, like you can see here, all the different features that actually stand out, not just flat. Then we contacted Gordon Ratty, which is a local woodworking genius. And he came and he and I conceptualized how to make all of these beautiful swings and the beds and the entrances really special. Throughout the years, my, my method of sculpture has been to get a lot of little bits of wood, screw them together to make big things, rather than get a big piece of wood and whittle away at that. Uh, so a lot of this is recycled timber. We go to the mills and we'll buy the offcuts, and that suits the program. I really enjoyed arriving here every day, because it, this is, it's been the most fun project I've done in a long time. The favorite aspect of this build was the moon swing. I'd never done anything like that before. And wood listens to me. <laughs> That's my thing, it, it, uh, it seemed to communicate with it well. Easier than people. I'm out on the road with my trailer, my gloves, and I'm looking for small little details that can make Treedom really beautiful. I found these clogs at a second-hand shop that really built into the heritage of my mother being Dutch. Mark's mom, Ellen, and her late husband, Bernard, were among the first people to believe in Treedom. These Vardos were built in their memory. Bernard, oh, what a sweet English gentleman that he was, always used to say to us every single time that he saw us was, nice to see you. So in, in uh, commemoration to him, we wrote the nice to see you on the steps. And also for Bernard, on each side of the front door, you'll see the purple bees. And then for Ellen was the lovely tulips from, from Holland. And on the top of the door, more tulips and the two hearts that Monique made for their two hearts. This portrait here is of Ellen in her prime and her little necklace for Ellen loves Bernard. <laughs> so cute. Come in. A traditional Vardo is a little bit smaller than these that we've designed. I wanted to give the holiday makers a little bit more space and a little bit more luxury. So these are six meters by three meters where the traditional is four and a half by one and a half. A lot of our beautiful things inside here are upcycled from our chandeliers to our headboards to the doors of the bathroom I found in secondhand stores, in dumpsters, friends' houses and I really wanted to have pieces that were unique and not something that you could just buy at any old shop. Now the headboard I found at my neighbors, Herman and Duncan, it was an old bench. And when I looked at it lying in their scrapyard, I immediately was like, have to have it, have to upcycle and look how beautifully they have turned out with the little moons and painted beautifully and sanded to look like they're really authentic. The little personal touches that I love the most is our luxury gypsy cushion, which was designed by Karen Dixon, who is a very, very well-known set designer. And the kissing moons for the love. And inside, we've written something in here for Bernard that he always used to say. Whenever he was excited, he always used to say, whoopee. And of course, being in the bedroom, it's making whoopee. <laughs> The special elements of the Alvado are very close to my heart because this is dedicated to my mom, Lynn. Um, especially the wheels. The wheels were such a bonus. We found them in Lesotho when a friend of ours was on a scout for cast iron stoves. And I mean, look how absolutely amazing they are. That little saying, I'll love you forever, is obviously because of mom and my three sisters and I 
um, came up with that little sign when we were designing and it's just it's so sweet. So these pretty elements on the outside of the owl, um, iceberg roses are something my mom used to grow in a garden and the sacred hearts that we have everywhere was because having four daughters, none of us ever felt like either of us was the favorite. She gave us so much love and that's where the sacred heart comes into it. The alvado being the same layout as the gypsy, but in here, the colors are soft, just like the feathers of an owl. And also for each of our vadas, we have created a signature, beautiful, magical, and enchanting entrance to these gorgeous little bedrooms. We wanted to add elements that were unique. And how cool is this bed for stargazing and sun lazing? So we built these little greenhouses as an extra area because the vadas aren't quite big enough to relax and dine in. So the little greenhouses are so cute. They've got a lounge for four and dining for two, so you can have friends over. And all the furniture we have has all been upcycled, which is exactly what we want to do here at Treedom, is give life to old things. I guess the most proud moment in this whole experience is the, the reaction on people's faces when they arrive here. The, the wow that they experience, that is the real thing that drives me. And that's what we built this for, is for the love, for the happiness, for the joy. And it just makes us so happy to make others happy. I know in my heart that this is the absolute chosen path for Mark and I, and it's been the most magical experience building this and doing this together as a couple. It's made us grow and learn from each other and we are just over the moon. I would what? do it a thousand times <laughs> over. We are so over the moon of what we've created, so yay! <laughs>my love of art started um, when I was very young. I think I was around nine, ten years old, maybe. I realized that perhaps maybe this is something I needed to pursue as a career. Even though at the time I didn't know anyone was a professional artist for me to be able to relate to. I actually got introduced to working with recycled materials simply because when I started art at Funda College in Soweto, we didn't have resources for us to be able to really do what we wanted to do. So there was a time where we would be introduced to alternative materials like magazines, newspapers. So we were offered all these alternatives, you know, for us to be able to really understand that art is not always about buying materials. You can actually use the little that you have for you to be able to make a very serious statement as an artist. The technique that I'm currently experimenting with is slightly different to what other fellow artists are working with, in the sense that I'm using predominantly plastics. It was a struggle when I started because it is something that I couldn't learn or emulate from anyone else. It is something that I tried so hard as an artist to make sure that I develop this thing up to a point where it starts to be recognized as a form of respectable material. And this is what I've been doing for the last 30 years. And I think it is only now the world is really beginning to acknowledge, you know, what one has been doing for all these years. Mbongeni's art tells important stories, often putting the spotlight on serious issues in need of attention. 
for this particular work um, that talks about a boy or a young man in Limpopo that drowned in a toilet latrine. As an artist, I thought this is a story for me that I need to take it out there to the world to see. My work is uh, basically about social commentary. For example, I've got this theme that I'm also currently working on, where the material informs the subject itself. I'm trying to bring up some of the beautiful creatures that we have in the sea that we also need to protect and make sure that we remove these plastics that many people are complaining about. The specific type of materials that I work with is it differs sometimes, but um, I always prefer the softer ones. You know, the softer quality is much better for me because it doesn't require a lot of heat for it to stick because I don't use glue in my work. It's only temperature that goes up to 600 degrees that I use to stick plastic onto another plastic. Another interesting thing that I think I need to mention as well is that I don't only rely on using the color that one sees from the outside. I can also use the inside part of it. That gives you two different shades. The technique that I use is a bit complicated because I actually start with the frame. After the frame, I wrap it with another plastic, which is of a different quality. In this case, it's black. So from this black, I start building up with different colors to create the image that I want to create and that's how the process starts. I have a huge passion to work with recycled materials or waste materials because it teaches one quite a lot. And beyond that, it's some kind of contribution towards the environment where it's a way of showing other people that it could be done, you know, without necessarily having money. At the end of the day, it is not only about the objects that I create. It is also about creating that awareness in the society to say, look, there is something that we can possibly do for us all to contribute and make that difference. Small as it might be, but at the end of the day, it is a, a difference. I mean, in my case, I produce work that consumes quite a number of plastics that I collect from everywhere. And at some point I ask myself, if those plastics were not here at my studio, where would they be? Together with Mike Labangwane, Mongeni was commissioned to create this artwork, stretching up the wall of the Leonardo in Santon. This work is actually entitled Fusion. The story here is all about trying to capture the events that we've been through as a country and as a continent. There are eight panels that make up all this mural painting. So the bottom part here deals with the past and the history of black Africans in South Africa. That top part deals with the police, which is also part of our history that one is not proud of. And on the other side of the artwork, there is a map of the continent that also symbolizes what is happening in the mural, just to show that it's happening within the continent of Africa. All these panels were made at the studio. We had to bring them here, and the process of installation, we had to start from the top, going down. It's not every day where one is getting these kind of opportunities, where you get commission for a work as big as this one, and also get some kind of assurance that your work will be on the wall as long as the building leaves. Thank you so much for coming, guys. I sincerely appreciate it. It's been a great pleasure for me to get this opportunity to be able to share some of my ideas and what I'm doing in my studio. Thank you. By highlighting problems of waste, pollution and poverty through the materials he uses, Mbongeni Butelezi reminds us that resourcefulness and ingenuity can create meaningful works of art. From the Capitec HQ in Stellenbosch, an idea was born to repurpose what was no longer being used and about to be thrown away into something new and exciting. The result? Creating job opportunities and empowering South Africans in need. When we do maintenance of branches and we do upgrades of branches, we normally change these fabric cloths with new ones or then marketing have some new campaigns sometimes and we also then change them to the new campaigns. So we thought, what are we going to do with these fabrics? Because they're quite expensive and we don't want to just throw them away, we want to recycle. So we teamed up with the CSI department 
and we came up with this idea to use this material to make recycled bags. Recycling of any product is important and I felt that we could reuse these products and I had a bag made for myself by somebody that was recycling and then got the idea that this fabric is exactly the same as what we are throwing away. We then found the ladies in Luwandle, they were sewing our masks when the COVID hit us and I gave them the fabric, we sat together, I gave them samples and they have come up with the most amazing beautifully made items in their home. They work from their home and they love our wording. They're very clever with it. And every product says something to you. We have about eight to 10 ladies, which helps me here to do the bags. And we also have two gentlemen. This initiated us in a way that we're able in the pandemic time now we are able to have finance which will manage to buy food and also the ladies to gather together and work together. You know, sometimes if you are indoor by yourself, you can also be in a stressful moment, but this also encourages us as we are working together, we are also encouraging one another not to give up. These bags also is materials which are being reused, so it gives us a good opportunity. I was retrenched from work, so during that time I was like keeping busy, helping chair to cut the fabrics and tracing out the patterns and then steaming of the end products. That's what I do mostly. I started to work with Charity last year for the maskies. It's helping me to feed my kids or to help my family because I'm working. <laughs> I'm really like enjoying this because then it's uh, like a diverse group where we're not only speaking one language, we'll be speaking Shona and Kosa and English. So that's what I enjoy most, like learning different languages with the ladies. And it's also a good thing that we're keeping ourselves busy. I do enjoy it because we come together as women and we get to discuss other things more than just working. So at least there's no more stress. You get to come and talk with other people. That's the beauty of the project. Not only do we reuse and recycle, but we also give work to the ladies that make this. And we appreciate what they do for us, because I doubt very much that you will find a shopping bag as unique as ours, or a lunch bag that'll make you smile when you put your lunch in and take your lunch out of it. What we also do is in the CSI department, we make up lunch bags, we make up pencil bags, we make up drawstring bags that we then donate to schools and to children. We did a huge back to school campaign in January where we asked staff to pay in money and we then donated to schools all over the country. They each got a backpack, they each got a lunch bag and a pencil bag made from our recycled fabrics. So apart from using the fabrics, we've also used billboard material and we made planter boxes out of them. And Aitza School uses them to show their children how to replant and how to look after and grow plants in these boxes. I love that we took something that's old, that we've uh, used for something, and now we're turning it into something new. It's got a new purpose. We are being kind to the environment. We are being kind to our communities, and I think that really represents what Capitec is all about. I love how creative they are. I love that one day they were a flag, today they are beautiful bags. I like that I get to go home with one, and I love that I got to do my Christmas shopping today, right in the beginning of August. Our staff love these products. They are fun, they're practical, they're easy to use, they're easy to wash. And I think wearing a Capitec product makes you just feel different, makes you feel you're part of Capitec and part of a family. For a chance to get your hands on this unique collection of bags, we are giving away 10 Live Better sets consisting of a shopper, lunch and computer bag to 10 lucky viewers. 
Simply reply to the competition post on the insidersa.co.za social media platforms using hashtag live better. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider Essay website. Next on the Insider Essay. Visit the leafy suburb of Houghton where Nelson Mandela's former home has been turned into a hotel to honor his legacy. Sponsored by Capitec. Simplify banking. Live better. Inspired by the past to achieve something new, the Houghton home Nelson Mandela stayed in for a time during his presidency has been re-envisioned into a boutique hotel which honors the legacy of this great man. Hi guys, I'm Irat Nivert from Kim H. New. Welcome to Sanctuary Mandela. This was a very special project for me because this used to be Nelson Mandela's house where he lived for eight years before and during he was president. In 2018, we were approached by the Nelson Mandela Foundation in Tebe to help turn it into something special. So we assisted in designing and coming up with the concept and creating this beautiful boutique hotel which rejuvenates this beautiful building. With it being a heritage building, there were quite a couple of restraints involved in designing this ultimate concept. And the architects were really clever in bringing it all together because we had to keep that iconic look, which is something that you could see on movies like Invictus. The main concept throughout this whole space is the story, the story of the man who lived here. And we didn't want it to feel like a, a, a museum. So everything from the entrance where you walk up from the parking lot all the way through into the space starts telling the story. That's why we brought these beautiful rusted steel elements in. It gives a, a sense of structure and construction, but it's also got these words which we all would associate with the man that leads you up to the actual space so you can experience the rest of it. Renowned sculptor Andre Prinsloo was commissioned to make this piece, greeting guests at the entrance by capturing a familiar sight. The brief that I received was very simple. Um, I received a photograph. And the photograph basically showed him standing on the veranda on his porch um, every morning and he would read his newspaper. And I would use the reference of the photograph to get my exact position and stance ready. And then I would sculpt with a clay, with a plasticine clay over that. The significance of the statue is my diba in his casual. Even after his presidency, when most people would relax, would retire, he was one that stayed on top of the news. He was always inquisitive and he wanted to dedicate his attention and his love to looking after children. Stepping inside, one gets a glimpse into the private world of Nelson Mandela. The intention is to preserve history and legacy while enhancing it with modern beauty and amenities. So I didn't want the space to be overpowering when you walked in. Uh, I wanted to start telling the story subtly. So we brought a couple of key elements into the space that you greeted by. I wanted to start off the story by having photographs I took before we started construction. And that we actually framed and put behind the reception counter. A key part of the story that we touch on in all the furniture pieces is the structure. And what better than having original structure displayed like this. We had to bring in some boardrooms and this was really special for me because where these boardrooms are, they split between the footprint of where Madiba's original study was. And a lot of key things happen in these studies. So in the one boardroom, we've actually got a beautiful backlit glass section showing the original foundation of that structure. And that same curve's picked up into the swimming pool on the outside. So the step actually turns into the continuation of that footprint. So people can ask about that as well. The staff in this space is trained to be storytellers. So everything's gonna be story orientated. We're also very lucky that the foundation allowed us to use some of their personal gifts and elements that, that belong to Madiba. This was a gift from Quincy Jones. He actually wrote a song for him. And uh, this is the original he gave him. So we are allowed to display it in this space. We also brought some key elements from the original structure. And so I managed to salvage a piece of the wood of the entrance floor. And what better than turning it into an artwork? We've all seen parquet floors. But this is a special parquet floor because it was in this home and now it's framed up on the wall. So from up here, you can really experience that double volume space we saw downstairs that welcomes you into the hotel. Here it links all the bedrooms together. Now that all falls on a new addition to the building. The original building was on that side and I wanted it to be a clear definition between those structures. 
So we actually made a point of emphasizing all the structure this side. So the steel, the balustrades, even the skylights painted in contrasting black so you can see it's different to the rest of the original home. We didn't want to have that traditional numbered room element running throughout the hotel. Instead, we were lucky enough to be donated the beautiful set of works that John Mayer did about Madiba and his life. Each artwork depicting a specific time in his life and, and telling the story that way. So what better than actually bringing that into each room? We've got a piece outside, so the name of each room is based on the artwork mounted outside. And it also encourages that whole storytelling and reflection element of the hotel. So you met at reception, they tell you you're staying in Father of the Innocents, for instance, and you literally walk around looking at the paintings, finding your room that way, thereby exploring more of the space and more of the life of the man who lived in the home itself. So this is the, the presidential suite. It's the, the main bedroom of the original home. It's where Madiba slept and it will be the, the key room in the hotel itself. We had to create a space that uh, felt quality but wasn't cluttered. But more like that home theme that we're bringing in throughout the whole space. And then to add on to the, the theme for each room, now this room is Father of the Innocents on the John Mayer painting outside. We linked that to the inside through um, some original artworks from the foundation that were created by kids for Madiba and gifted to him. The design team aimed to convert this home into a hotel which still feels like a home. So a way that we really brought the space together was using grey as a backdrop and a base colour really. And how we did that effectively with materials was bringing this as a sheer into your curtaining, into your lounging areas and into your suite areas. Grey, which is the colour of concrete, was just a logical place to start and built our way up with lux and textured fabrics and colours to bring it all together. We used like a dark mahogany and mahogany and that really did allow the space to feel much richer, complementing your lighter tones and hues that we've used. Absolutely, I mean the devil's in the details, so those little details and how they come together is what really turns it into a magic space. Yeah. The restaurant remembers Tata Madiba's favourite dishes. For the father of our nation, food was more than sustenance. It was about tradition and spending time with family and friends. Michelle Obama and Bill Clinton were just two of the people he hosted here. The restaurant is actually named after this beautiful painting behind me over here called Insights. Um, we thought it is uh, a beautiful name. It reflects back to your know, sanctuary Mandela, a place of reflection um, and also a place for insights. So we want insightful conversations to take place in the restaurant. Few have better insight into what Madiba enjoyed eating than his longtime personal chef, Oliswa Ndoyiya. I started working for Tata Mandela from 1992, and I worked for him for 22 years of my life. I'm standing here in the kitchen that I used to cook, but now we have changed it into this kitchen. Beautiful kitchen is a hotel kitchen. I'm going to cook one of his favorite dishes, the oxtail stew. In front of me, I've got oxtail, potatoes, carrots, green beans, and garlic. And for my season, I've got a tomato puree, salt, paprika, black pepper, barbecue spice, and my oxtail soup powder. What I have to do with the oxtail, I have to trim all the fat because Tata didn't want to see fat in his plate. After trimming my oxtail, I have to boil it and fry it from its own fat, let it brown itself. Then I will add my spices. Then I'll boil it a little bit. Then as the meat is cooking, I will have to add my vegetables right at the end of the meal. This dish is the one that has inspired one of the dishes in our menu at the restaurant. The dish is called oxtail ravioli. Those years that I used to serve data, I would say those were the great years of my life. Oh, I will never forget him when he will make people's faces smile because of what he can do for them and share with them. That was my experience, the good one. It's been a very fun and interesting project to work on, and ultimately it's a huge honor to be involved in an iconic international landmark such as this hotel. And I truly hope that anyone who gets the privilege to see this space enjoys it as much as we did doing it. Coming up. Head out on an adventure to Wolseley with Francois van Koek and his family.
Francois van Kook is an iconic name in the world of alternative Afrikaans music. First breaking onto the scene with his band in the mid noughties Francois has expanded his career into a variety of musical ventures. His biggest priority in life today is his family, who joined us for a retreat near Walsley. There's my amazing wife, Lauren. This is Max, he's nine months old. Oh no! And this is Alex, <laughs> she's four years old. She's turning five, hey? Alex was a, a, a shock to the system. It took us two years to recover from, from her high energy. <laughs> and decide if we want another child. <laughs> That's why Max is, is like four years younger than Elle, but it yeah. feels like it should have been like he this. He nine months in Mommy's stomach. Yeah. Yeah, nine months in and nine months out. <laughs> At the moment, family life is pretty chill. We're mostly at home and spending time together. My husband's not on the roads as much. I work with him on some projects and we also run like an online merch store, so we work together on that. And then now and then, I guess, hopefully a gig comes in here and there or we get to go somewhere like this awesome trip. I love that we're on this little dam here, the snow on the mountains, it feels like we're in a different place. I mean, we drive here for an hour and it feels like little Switzerland. <laughs> Switzerland. <laughs> Welcome to the Riverstone Cottages. My name is Monica Kamsti and I am the guest house manager. We are situated about 10 minutes outside Woolsley on a blueberry farm. We've got so many attractions with the snow in the winter months and we're close to Tilbach, which is a tourism town and Ceres is just around the corner and it's a very serene place to be. The accommodation consists of the main house and two converted containers on the edge of the farm. The couple spot consists of one bedroom. Uh, we've got a, a very lovely stoop with an outside braai and as you enter you've got the kitchen and we have a living area with the inside fireplace for the cold winter nights. And then you've got the bedroom with amazing views of the mountains. And then you've got an amazing outside bath um, in between the garden for all those tranquil nights. We chose to open the containers as it's quite a new concept and um, nobody is really used to the idea. So it's like a home away from home um, with all the amenities and it's just like a very nice modern idea. The concept of recycling and repurposing is something Francois relates to. I think it's important that we recycle, you know, I recycle at home. I think things have changed definitely over the years. It's a very much more normal thing. Like my kids learn about it growing up. When we were kids, we learned, you know, zip it in the ZB, like throw it in the bin. You know, now at least the kids start their lives knowing that it's better to recycle. Having written and performed songs that speak to a youthful audience who might previously have felt alienated from society, many consider Francois to be the voice of a generation. The music I make is quite, quite personal, so I, I would always like to try and stay relevant to where I am at the moment, which is mostly South Africa, and how the world affects that. Then I'm inspired by my family, and I'm definitely inspired by my friends. But I've got a bunch of friends that, that make cool music that I kind of grew up with, that are from the same place. Um, I'm glad that I'm in a position that I, I've got friends that inspire me too. One of the activities here is a visit to a pear and blueberry farm where you can pick your own fruit. I'm Andre Pretorius. I'm the farm manager here at Aurora Berries. We start harvesting in July and then we end off with the latest varieties in the end of middle December. So the reason for that is, as you can see, there's fruit that's not ripe. Here's one that's going to be ripe soon. And then you've got different flower buds still developing. Each week, the plant is different. Basis waarna jy kyk as jy die besie pluk is daar net een ding, jy pluk op kleur. So hier so is drie wat amper lyk of hulle reg is. Maar as jy kyk aan die achterkant, is eindelijk net daar een reg. So ek kan daar een af pluk? Jy kan daar een af pluk, ja. Kyk eens, liefie. Kyk, hy moet so blauw wees al achter. Blieproe. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Let's get picking. Francois hopes that Alex and Max will enjoy the same kind of experiences he had as a child. My favorite memories of growing up in South Africa was holidays. I, I guess like going to the beach, going to places like uh, Pearly Beach and El Coral's Mount. Um, I just wanted to see the beauty of South Africa. I wanted to experience a lot and as much as we can possibly expose them to new things. It's just a beautiful place. And I also love that it's culturally diverse and there's so much we can learn from each other. With the business named after the enchanting book, The Olive Tree and the Rock, husband and wife Simone and Nick Stanford are specialist caterers and freshly baked blueberries are one of their favorite ingredients. I'm Nick Stanford. I'm the chef and owner at Olive Rock Wedding Venue. It's always exciting, the seasons here, of course, for me as a chef. Fresh produce grown by locals can be enjoyed and sort of heroed. And I'm making Francois and his family steak and blueberry salad with some crispy baby potatoes and hollandaise sauce. Well, we'll start with the salad. We are going to use a base of uh, beautiful baby spinach. We're going to follow that with some fresh broccoli, which is produced in the series area. Top that with toasted pecans, some homemade ricotta, some blueberries picked on the farm here, some avo, and then finally some asparagus, which we're going to char on the brine in a bit, just to give it that added layer of flavor. We've simply boiled our baby potatoes and we are going to crush them, salt them, and put a whole lot of olive oil and roast them for about an hour until they are nice and crisp. Number one thing I tell most people before cooking, particularly red meat, is to remove that meat from the fridge some hours before you're going to cook. Definitely helps in the tenderness later. Second thing with fattier cuts like this is to render the fat out. I'm using this beautiful Dreamfire T-bone rack to, to do just that and it makes the job a lot easier. And as you can see, we're getting a good rendering of that fat. We've never had a private chef that bribed for us. My daddy stole the blueberries. Thanks, Nick. It looks amazing, man. Oh, it's been lovely. It's unbelievable venue. The views when you wake up in the morning, it is so calming and I feel so relaxed and it's beautiful just to see the snow and this beautiful dam in front here as well like it's unbelievable. Just want to raise our kids as well as possible you know give them as, as much love as what we can and for me you know I, I just want to carry on making music want to play bigger shows as soon as we can and um, I want to keep on making music that means something to people and inspires others. Francois van Kook is a rocker and a family man, proving it's possible to be an inspiration to his fans as well as his loving wife and their two children. Next on the Insider Essay, See how a dynamic exercise class has adapted to our changing world by going online. Sweat 1000 is a powerful name in the South African fitness scene that grew its popularity with energetic classes, bright lights, loud music and intense exercise. With the onset of COVID, they created new exciting opportunities by shifting into an online space. We launched Sweat 1000 11 years ago when we felt there was a need for boutique fitness focusing in specific treadmill work and floor work. We needed to reinvent ourselves when COVID hit last year and people were forced to stay home with lockdown regulations and also the fear of going out and being in public spaces like gyms. We knew we needed to create an online platform for people to stay healthy, both mentally and physically. And we started our online platform with Sudor Interactive and we launched Sweat 1000 Live. 
Being a Vodacom Red VIP, you get to enjoy the Sweat 1000 app for free for three months. Vodacom approached us to do a collaboration using our fitness portal on the online basis as they saw the need for their clients to stay fit and active during these tough times. So this is our on-site Sweat 1000 studio where we do all our live workouts plus all that content gets saved for you on the app for you to catch up at your convenience. So literally there are thousands of workouts on the app. So we have classes for beginners, intermediate and advanced athletes. When we post on our schedules, we do specify the level of fitness that is required to complete the class. They're also suitable for both females and males. Ages from young to old can do any of the classes. The equipment that we use is basic equipment like dumbbells and resistance bands. If you don't have any equipment at home, that's not a problem either. We do have modifications where we use any light equipment that you might have at home, such as water bottles or cans. Those will do just fine as well. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a bit of a behind the scenes demonstration of what happens in our, one of our live classes. So everything is streamed through the phone. We teach from in front of the phone so we can see what's happening on the phone. There is interaction, there is uh, comments that come up on the screen. We like to interact with our clients. If it's tough and they're sticking in there and they're staying strong, we, know, we want to know that as well. Five, four, three, two, one, and done. A couple years ago, I actually was 18 kilograms heavier than I am now and I decided to join Sweat 1000. I genuinely became addicted. I started coming five to six times a week, and then two years down the line, they couldn't get rid of me enough, so I decided to join the family permanently. I became an instructor here, and the best part about it was being a female instructor, I think that it was really nice to just be able to motivate other women and motivate them to want to become stronger and fitter and faster, obviously. One of the biggest benefits, I think, for, of Sweat 1000 Live and why I'm so excited for the VIP Red members to get involved, those who are sitting at home and are feeling intimidated and a little bit scared to like get out into the gym and start their fitness journey, they can start it at home. So the nice thing about that is that it's not competitive. You know what, it's just you against you and you and your trainer, trainer in your pockets and you get to go at your own pace. All right, for today we are gonna to be focusing on those abs and those glutes. Absolutely no equipment needed. 30 minutes coming your way. Sweat Live is for everyone and it is fun. You know what, I mean, there's so many different options of workouts that you can do, everything from boxing, body weights, uh, equipment, no equipment, Pilates, bar. I mean, there's so many female um, instructors on the platform and so many like, female orientated workouts as well. There's certain things like, you know, that I find a lot of women gravitate more towards is Pilates, yoga. And then for those of the women out there who want to like challenge themselves a little bit more and get a little bit stronger, there's body weight exercises, adding dumbbells. I mean, the list really does go on. So one of the things that I love the most about the online platform is because we condense it down into 30 minutes, you've got 30 minutes of hard work, but it's in bite-sized pieces. Do you know what I mean? It's not overwhelming, it's not a full hour. And being able to interact with people who are online who wouldn't normally come into the gym, you know, we've got people all over the world. You can jump on board any time of day and find a workout that's perfectly suited just for you. As a Vodacom Red VIP customer, I'm super happy to have access to the Sweat 1000 classes. I love working out of home. During the pandemic, I have access to different classes, uh, so many different trainers, different vibes, different muscle groups to work through. And I get to do this all at my home, in my own time, and I get to burn the calories and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Stand the chance to win one of 10 Sweat 1000 vouchers for a one month access to get you summer ready courtesy of Vodacom. Experience Red, unlock more. To stand a chance of winning, go on to the Insider SA Facebook and Twitter pages. Tell us what benefit or reward you'd enjoy when you switch or upgrade to Vodacom Red. Competition closes at midnight on Saturday, 21st August. Winners will be announced on the Expresso Morning Show on Monday, the 23rd of August.
For more information on the incredible guests featured in today's show, head over to the insidersa.co.za. Join us again next week as we celebrate South African gems. Get more of the Insider SA online. Follow, connect, engage, and be inspired to live better with the Insider SA. Watch the show Monday evenings at 5.30. Repeat Saturday at 1 on S3.